Our role. So where should we begin? We should begin from the name. What's in a name? We heard this commercial. Some of you have probably seen this commercial. It used to be on certain channels on TV. We talk about genealogy and names and stuff. And they're like, well, what's in a name? Find out what's more about what's in your family name. What's in a name? And they had said in the commercial, uh, people, places, ideas, so forth and so on. And we thought that was a very interesting commercial. What's in a name? So what's in this particular name? Mm. Shoftim. Shoftim. Now let's first put put the conventional um, spelling, the, the more conventional spelling of it right here. Shoftim. Now we know that this is the forty, the forty eighth, the forty eighth um, Torah scroll reading or the Parsha weekly Torah portion. Now, Bamarinya in the Amharic, in the Bible of the Met of Kedus of Hala Selassie, or the Book of the Seven Seals, otherwise known as the Revised Amharic Bible, right, it is called Farajoch, uh, Bamarinya, it's known as Farajoch, which means judges as well, in the, in the Targum, or the translation, which may be called the Targum. Now, Mm. Now somebody also want to know about smoking, because some might find a little problem with smoking. You understand? Um, say, well, you know, smoking is not that good for you, and marijuana, and we want to touch on that whole thing about drugs and kind of clear that up as well. But let's just move forward. Give me a moment. Mm. So, and the good is now. We can put third eye Joach, put it right here just for the reference. Uh Fe Ra Jo Che Fe Ra Jo Che Fe Ra Joach. Right? So this is from the, the Royal Amharic Bible of the King of Kings of Hala Selassie of the Conquering Line, the tribe of Judah. Revelation 5.5, 5, from Mr. 5 by 5s Bible, is Sarai Joch. Now, in the good is from which this has been translated, the Met of Kedus of Negus and Negus, we find something very interesting. And we find that in good is, it is called um, Fe, Fe, Ta, He, Te. Fe, ta, he, and put a te right here. Fe, ta, he, te. Fe, ta, he, te. Like fita, but fe, ta, he, te, which means judge. Now, we had mentioned before in the series that we did, we was making a connection with pata. Now, if ones were able to be, you know, patiently go through that series with us, and uh, at this point now can maybe see the connection well, we had to touch on the roots of it. Remember, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. So therefore, if Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, the upper and lower Egypt, the Egypt of Egypt, as well as the Egypt of Ethiopia, which was the root, then he was learned in this as well. So we have Fetahite. Fetahite. You understand? Fetahite. Pata. Pata. Petahite. Then we have this is the Gutters, and then we have this now Bamarinya in the Amharic Farajoch, and then we have the link with Shoftim now in the Hebrew dialect Shoftim. Now Shoftim means means judges, right? It's plural with the Yad and the Mim, the Yad and the Mim. It's, it, it now plural, pluralizes it. Now, in looking this up, Bamarinya, and looking at this up, Bamarinya, and we have some notes right here. Let's just uh, go to this for a moment. And looking this up in the Met of Kedus, we looked up Safit. 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 Let's see if we can put this right here. Safit. Take a little bit of that right there. Safit. Sa. Fe. Fe. 
and this right here, soffit, soffit. Hope you can see that soffit. Can one see that? Or is that is that off camera or is that on camera? Soffit, soffit, right? Soffit. So now soffit. What does soffit mean? What is the root of soffit? Now of course the Hebrew here is show. It says show in the in the fourth Hebrew, modern Hebrew show. Now we have the ancient. Ethiopic, you understand? We have Safit. Now, how do we know we have Safit? Where do we derive this Safit from? And since there's much to be shared in this particular, in this particular, um, in this particular lesson that we have, Safit. Here's here's just a little note that we had put in our copy thing right there, Safit. Now we're going to seek to present this up here. Now we said Shoftim. First of all, Book of the Beginnings, Joe Macy's um, excellent um, works and volumes, um, Book of the Beginnings, uh, Natural Genesis, uh, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, and then his, his final work, which is like a, a summary of what he wrote and researched before, w was called, or, or is called, uh, Lectures. That was the final work. So. We got into it from lectures. We were so interested in lectures, which we could recognize he was, he was coming to the end of his days. He recognized that he had labored long, and, you know, he, he's almost like writing this as his final um, work, but he's referencing that he's already spoken in detail on it. So we went into the other work, and this is where we also have become very interested in Gerald Macy's um, research as it helps us to explicate what we know as the Ethiopic Genesis and Ethiopic Exodus and, and the Ethiopic root, as well as putting the so-called mythology, what's known as mythology. Mythology, the word myth has changed meanings. We want to just point this out. The word myth has changed meaning. So if you talk about mythology to most people, they will think of mythology as something that is false and frivolous. And, and, and just a bunch of heathen people, mythology, and that's how it was before. But we're not dealing with myths. But then when you study mythology, the word myth, and then you study the connection of it etymologically with the word mystir or mystery, and it's in a mutos, which is that root, you find that the mystery, as Christ speaks about, he see, he's speaking these things in a parable because it is explicating mysteries, but the mysteries has, has not been given to everyone. You understand? But it's been given to the Dekamizamorit. It's been given to the disciples. It's been given to those who are of the order or who, those who are of the prerequisite discipline as the disciples. So this is important. This is important to understand. There is a mystery. You understand? But the word myth, we just want to just go over this again if one is just hearing this for the first time, that we, we, we will mention myth, and one will speak about Gerald Macy, who, who speaks laboriously, exhaustively at length concerning myth, and many folks will be a little turned off out of their ignorance. You know, because they're ignorant. In other words, they don't know. They just don't know, or they have been taught something from people who they trust that's not completely accurate and right and exact, and the people who taught them this didn't know, but it's almost like passing things on. Things have been passed on. And might be appropriate in some context, but in the full sense of it, you understand, these, these errors prevent ones from receiving or grasping the half of the story that hasn't been told or the mystery. So when we speak of mystery, and mystery school was speaking of it in the sense of the Bible, what the Bible has to say, not in the sense of some so-called pseudo-secret society or so-called so-called luminous or satanist or this one and that one or ancient Greek and these ancient um, heathenistic um, cultures that perverted the ancient truth that was told in types in similes and in types. You hear Christians speak about this is a type of that or this is a simile of that. Th these words types and similes basically are what the word myth or mutos means. So the word myth has changed meanings. 
you know what I'm saying, over time. And you can look this up. This is, this is information that is public information, freedom of information, meaning that you have the freedom to look this up and find this out for yourself, that the word myth has changed meaning roughly around like the 1700s, somewhere in, uh, approximately in the 1700s, the idea among the, the Gentiles or the Eurocentric Christians, they change the connotation. They couldn't change the etymology. That's the true roots of the word, the, the true meanings of the word as recorded, you understand, as you follow words from languages and cultures and so forth and so on. But they changed the connotation of it. You know, where they, they've made bad good and good bad and so forth and so on, just like a lot of words today are used connotatively. That means deceptively. The connotation is the deceptive part. Not that it's intended to be deceptive, but it's like how we use a word today, but it wasn't used that way in the past. For example, they have American Idol today. You know, that's a TV show. A lot of people, even people who will be like, I'm a good Christian, they watch, <coughs> they watch American Idol. You know, they watch this program, American Idol, and they find nothing's wrong with it. They say it's not idolatry, really, but, but it has... It has the root of that, that, that word there, but in a connotative sense. You see, in a connotative sense, it is not considered to be, you understand, idolatry, but in the overall etymological, in the true sense, it is. Because why are you playing with that word? You understand? So that's just an example of how words change meaning. So myth at one time, you see, the myth, you understand, the myth, we have to go back to the ancient, what they call the ancient mythology, but the mythology, maybe we should just put this right here, the myth. Now there's the myth, but the myth equals the ancient mystery. All right? Now we have the mystery of God in Christ, and we have the mystery of iniquity. There's the mystery, the Bible speaks about both of these. It says there's the mystery of God in Christ, and then, the, which has been, been hidden from the beginning of the world, and then there's the mystery of iniquity. You know and those two, though they both are called myths, they are two different, they have two different um, centers and focal points. One is the mystery of the true God and his way and his revelation, and the other is the mystery of rebellion from the true God, you understand, know and his way. So we need to distinguish, you understand, know we need. Um, discernment. Proverbs speaks about this as well. We need discernment. We should pray for discernment. Every time that we read or study Bible and we get into the Word, we should pray to God, the God and Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Yeshua, HaMashiach, that He gives us individually and collectively discernment. You know what I'm saying? But then we also have to do, um, we have to work out our salvation. We're not working to be saved, but we are working out our salvation. We recognize we're saved by grace, but just being saved by grace and doing and not working with in that grace period, that probationary period, you know what I'm saying, means that in the judgment, getting back to this word shoftim in the, and, and judges, in the judgment, we would have fallen from that grace that he freely gave us because we didn't do anything with that opportunity of grace with that with that um um probationary sort of period remember there is a judgment there is a judgment and we need to understand that that there are judgments every day of course but there is a a a full judgment you understand for for we as 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 created and even born again as born again beings so let's just understand that right there so we want to just touch on this word myth and, and equals mystery but myth today connotatively means something that is false or fiction or was by ignorant, ancient, primitive, ignorant people. But the truth is different than the popular, the popular fiction or the popular lie. So myth is very, very important. So whenever you hear somebody telling you, oh, myth, we're not dealing with no myth. If they knew what they think they know, they would say we're not dealing with a so-called myth. And perhaps if they have time to explain it, like we have tried and endeavored to explain it, or in some way, not to leave people in the, in the intellectual and spiritual dark, as it were. But the myth equals the ancient mystery. And the ancient mystery now, we know, 
comes out of the so-called Egypt. And we learned that Moses was learned in all of the mystery of the, or, or the wisdom. This is the wisdom of the Egyptians the wisdom of the Egyptians, but we tell you that this word Egyptians found in Acts, let's put this here, in Acts, uh, what is it? Is, it, is it Acts 7 and 20, I think it's 7 and 22, in Acts 7 and 22, we learn that in Acts 7 and 22, it basically tells us that there, but the word Egyptians rather should be Egypt, there's a difference, some would say it's the same thing, no it's not. It's not the same thing. To say the Americas or the Americans is not the same thing. Americas mean that there are two types of America. And the Egypts mean that there are two types of Egypt. And we learn by studying the ancient um, mystery, you understand, the mystery that connects with the biblical theme. You see, you cannot rightly divide the word of truth without this, this um, what some may call extra biblical it's not putting the extra biblical before the biblical, but using the evidence to explain this, 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 this book that was written in a context of time that is somewhat very much different than the present so-called reality that we are dealing with today. So, and this overflow on, on Shof team, and perhaps we'll call this the Shof team or the judge's mystery, you understand? Know we find it to be very important for us to do two particular things. Now, we're going to teach the practical, the applicable part of this, because this is all about judges, but ultimately it's about judgment. And you understand? Both about the judgment of the Almighty, but also the personal judgment. Like Paul said, Hawari up Aulos, he said, if we would judge ourselves, you understand, then like no one would judge us. Like if we would do proper due diligence to judge ourselves. So in looking up the root, the, the soffit, which is the soffit that we put up here, which is the root of shoftim, shoftim, the yad and the meme in the Hebrew, now makes it plural, like it's farad, um, faraj, faraj, you know, and they have farajoch, you understand, um, which is singular to plural. The root now, singular, is the soffit. Now, in looking that up, just like the rabbis or the Jews, I'm saying the Jews who, 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 who uh, call themselves Jews or, or the popular uh, Jews, just like among the Jews, <clears throat> excuse me, among the Jews, they have um, certain rabbinical works, whether it's called Mishnah. The Mishnah, we want to actually do a teaching actually on that to familiarize our people with what is First of all, Torah. We're, we're in Torah, Torah studies, right? And Torah portion, weekly Torah portion. What is Torah? You understand? What is the Mishnah? What are, what are these other um, commentaries? These, these other commentaries and interpretations or works of commentary interpretation that's outside of the Torah, but they help students of the Torah to understand the Torah. And one of the highest studies that can be done is Torah studies, is, is studying the Torah. And the Torah is important. The first so-called five books of Moses is very, very important because it provides the context. It provides the essential context for, for the rest of the Bible leading straight through to the times of the Messiah. This is why we have Christ upon the Mount of Transfiguration. And he's there speaking and conversing with Moses and with um, Eliyahu or Elijah, Elias. So he's there conversing with Musa and I, Elias on the mountain. Now, that, that is very significant. Some say maybe Moses and Elijah are these two witnesses. But it's important for us to understand the importance of what Moses did, not just for the Beit Israel, but for all Humanity, you understand, he provides us with that background and that context that comes out of Egypt. Now, this is not to overglorify Egypt either, as many Afrocentrics and, and other black Egyptologists do. They glorify everything by Egypt is the best, Egypt and such. No, Egypt serves, serves the Almighty's plan, you understand, but the Egyptians, you understand, who originally, in, in the beginning, were Yahwist, 
In other words, in the beginning, before the fall, before the transgression, before all of that, they were worshippers of the true God. Even after Noah's time, they were all worshippers of the true God, so they all were Yahweh's. And we find that Yahweh, Yahweh worship comes out of ancient, ancient Ethiopia, comes out of inner Africa. And the types and symbologies and similes that are used biblically in order to understand what's in the Bible in the true context, we have to return to that repository of knowledge and information, and we have to mine it for ourselves. Now, as we just mentioned, the Jews, um, the, the white European Polish and, 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 and uh, what is it, Polish and German Jews who, who are the 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 present leaders, you understand, like whenever Jacob is down, then Esau will be up. Whenever, you know, Jacob is up, then Esau will be down. Right now, Esau or Esau is up, and we as Jacob, you understand, are down. And, yes, there is a, a racial, you understand, a racial dynamic to it. You understand, this is one of the hidden reasons for the, quote, racism that we have. People were lying to people, telling them we're in a post-racial world because of the first African-American president. But it's very clear, you understand, that racism, these issues of racism and slavery are real issues, you understand, and they have not been dealt with, you understand, by the community and by the individuals in the community. And this is one of the reasons that also connects with the biblical themes as well. People ask, well, when will this end? When will this racism end? They're not judging properly. They're not doing. They're not judging properly because they judge properly. The times of the Gentiles must end, and the times of the Gentiles are connected with a specific people. You understand? And that is the so-called Anglo-American, European, or to put it a little more simply, white people or white supremacy. You understand? When white supremacy ends. You understand? Then the kingdom of the King of Kings and His Christ, or the kingdom of God, can begin. And it's important for our um, white or European Anglo-American Christian brothers and and sisters out there, brothers and sisters in, in the Christian sense or in the Christ sense, to really understand that this is not saying that everything black is good and everything white is bad. No, but we're in a period of time that's known as the the dominion of the Gentile. You understand? We're in the, and remember, the dominion of the Gentiles, um, one can say it begins with the, Greco, the Greeks, and then it continues with the Romans, and then it continues with the other European powers, European and non beta Israel powers, East and West, East and West, without exception, but at the head of the Gentiles, at the head of the so-called Gentile serpent, is white supremacy. We, we, we need to become very, very clear on that. And unfortunately, some of our white brothers and sisters out there, you know, in Christ, um, religiously speaking, many of them have to get bit by their own people, you understand, for them to really go crazy or recognize that all this time I've been living a lie. You understand that we saw a program the other day. We'll just mention this here again. A program the other day was on TV. Um, I think it was on PBS. And it was about um, either lupus, um, yeah, I think it's about lupus or something, one of these um, so-called modern diseases, and how um, they, were, they were forcing the doctors who were treating this to basically treat it according to this agreement that was made between the medical companies, you understand, the medical companies and certain academics at the expense of regular people, telling them that you can only get three months of antibiotics and treatment, yet these folks needed actually maybe a year, two, three years or more, but the insurance companies were telling, and, and the pharmaceutical companies, the pharmacists, the sorcery companies, were saying that um, to the doctors, no, you got to treat it like this, even though the doctors were doing their own research and having the first-hand evidence and many of them lost their licenses, were sued, you understand? And I think some black, black folks probably could get this disease as well. You know, it says the disease of the Egyptians will come down, spiritual Egyptians will come down upon the people. So this is happening. But it was very interesting because these were people who trusted this system. You know what I mean? As, as white folks. Now, with a black African-American president, 
it's easy now for the racist to spin the whole racial kind of the racial dial, you understand, and try to say that um, we're not moving into new times, but this is some nigger shit. You know what I mean? And and unfortunately, this is this is what's happening with Obama. We have another another um, series of uh, reasonings and and lectures that's that we recorded during the storm. We haven't posted it just yet, but look forward to I think we'll call the name of it, um, There Arose a King That Knew Not Joseph, something to that effect, uh, a, a king a king who knew not Joseph. And then in each part we'll try to focus on what the main, the main theme or the main point in that particular part is, which is showing where we're at right now and as we're going into this um, 2012, which is more than just, a change of the year or the calendar, but it also has to do with the whole orbit of the heavens and earth. This is a this is a celestial as well as a terrestrial um, um, time that we are moving into. You know, what I'm saying there there are the the, the 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 north is beginning to align with magnetic north and and the what they call the jet stream. This is why the storm that recently a tropical type storm came all the way up, you understand, to New York City. And some of the people who have been affected in New York City and Vermont, they still are not um, whole again and probably won't be quite whole. Many of them have lost many things, material things, are shocked that how could this happen, so forth and so on. The blame game is going on. And, and no one is pointing the people to the right direct, in the right direction to let ones know what the big picture. In fact, that storm was a mercy, if anything. The number of people who um, perished in it is significant because if it was your family, my family, we would, we would say it doesn't matter because it was just 40 or 50 or so people. But um, it, it, it was not as bad as, as, as it could be. So people are not properly judging these things. Once again, the, the key word here is not just judges, but it, it is, let's write this right here. The key word here is is judge meant they say you're not supposed to put the e in judgment sometimes older writers do but english is a developing language but the key right here is judgment you understand and the idea is judging and it's not for us people say well we're not to judge uh well we're not to judge by our own judgment see you know, even Christ, the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior, he said, um, judge not, uh, otherwise it'll be judged according to, he says, he says, you need to judge righteous. He says, righteous judgment. It's very clear. He says, righteous judgment. You understand? So the whole idea of what he says, judge not, was at the beginning, the initiation process, the initial process of discipleship. It's like when one's come forward and we're speaking about discipleship. What I would tell a group of of disciples or students is forget everything that you think you know, you understand, and learn, you understand, as Christ said, learn of me, in other words, learn of our black Lord and Savior via the Met of Caduce, via the Bible, and, and, and study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. So what we want to do is to rightly divide this word shoftim. Now we find the root is uh, safit. Now, this root in the Met of Caduce of Negus and Negus, in the Bible of His Imperial Majesty, the Amharic Bible, the Emperor's Bible, we have judges in this Bible, not including the, uh, the apocryphal books right, right now, and there's a good reason. Basic discipleship does not begin with the apocryphal books. Basic discipleship, it begins with Moses. Because if you know anything, even the apocryphal books, at least the two main ones, um, Jubilees and Hanok, or Kufali and Hanok, Moses has a lot to do with their preservation, the preservation of those two books as well. You understand? So it begins with Moses. Moses provides us that basic foundation that we know as order. And order, it, order, it corresponds to the first seal. When we talk about the seven seals, order, will, wisdom, righteousness at the heart chakra, you understand, patience, you understand, um, patience, love, and mercy, you understand, love is this, this pineal gland, 
You understand? The love of God in Christ. You understand? That is, that, that is what is supposed to be at this particular chakra. But we begin from the foundation. And the foundation, the first one is order. Is order. So, see, the chakras, which are the seats, are not only a physical thing. See, a lot of people pursue chakra, chakra cleansing, uh, metaphysics, spirituality, a lot of new ageism. They are pursuing it um, from a physical basis. You know what I'm saying? They are being born again into a, 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 a physical, or fleshy, or sensual type of um, um, metaphysical abstractionism. But it's not based it's not based on the word. It's not based on Christ. It's not based on the Moshiach. It's not based on truth. And if they don't wake up to it, you know, as we keep moving into the times that we're moving, a lot of that is failing them. You understand? But as it says that every word of God is pure. You understand? And not one of these shall fail. You understand? If one thinks one of the words is failing or something about the Bible or the teaching of God or teaching in the Bible is erroneous, it's perhaps the translator. You know, as we look at other translations, we find it out. Or perhaps it's a preacher or pastor, the way that's been taught. But it's not this word. Now, people will say, and we're not saying the book so much. It's, 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 it's not the book is the preservation of it. You know, saying these words are spiritual. They explain to us everything in creation that we can see as well as everything we cannot see. But the prerequisite is to study and to show ourselves approved. So now in this... Um, Overflow in dealing with Shoftim, which was our 48th, um, 48th uh, sabbatical, 48th uh, sabbatical study, Rastafari sabbatical study and scroll, um, was named Shoftim as well. Now we find that Macy gives us um, a very interesting um, um, commentary. So Macy, for us as Ethiopian Hebrews and elect Rastafari. Joe Macy's works, the, the, the three main ones, but including the fourth one, um, A Book of the Beginnings, uh, Natural Genesis, Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, both volumes one and two, as well as lectures. He is likened to our Talmudic, or when we say Timherit, our Timherit studies for us as Ethiopian Hebrews, as black Jews, and as elect Rastafari. He is our point of reference. Why? Because he has gone into the ancient research and the ancient um, um, evidences and, and found something astonishing even for him that the real root of it comes out of Africa. You understand? And, and, and the Jews, the original Jews, were obviously black peoples. And as well, as those are some of the overt points. There's a lot of other points that, that needs to be gone through point by point. So Macy is a is a good um, for us our rabbinical our rabbinical reference point um, is not firstly the other Jews and their documentation but it's it's more ones like Gerald Macy and and, and, and his documentation then even we would add to that ones like um, brother Dr Ben Johanan except to a little lesser degree and we'll explain why. Dr. Ben Johanan to a lesser degree. The main work that, that he has done was the one about the, um, the, the um, We the Black Jews. And let me see if I can get that work right here. We the Black Jews. All right. Because one will say, well, what I want to do is I want to learn Hebrew. You understand? I, 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 I want to go study like uh, Shine or or. Or Michael Levi, I won't go study with some Orthodox Jews. I mean, you can, you're free, you're a free agent. You can do as you like. I wouldn't say that would be particularly bad. It depends on who's who. Individuals and communities are different. Um, even from back in the days in Crown Heights, there are many Orthodox Jews that we used to fellowship with, in a sense, you know, and burn weed at least, burn herb, as they say, burn marijuana with. They would basically come to those, um, Rastafari and other Jamaicans and others who were selling herb. They would actually buy herb, 
you know, some of the Hasidic Jews, this is a very interesting part of history, they would buy marijuana and they would go and, and smoke and we asked them, we said, well, why are you come down here to, and, and they said, well, some of the older rabbis and certain rabbis, you know, do this, have done this, and, and it's part of their, their shh, don't speak about it kind of policy. They would burn herb, you understand, and, and, and um, study Torah. They would burn herb and study Torah. And that was very interesting because a lot of us, as Rastafari in the original groundation, that's exactly the same thing. So it was not burning herb to so-called just get high, you know, I mean, just to get high or something like that. But it was burning herb in the same way that in, in Torah and in the Bible it teaches um, it was used in the tabernacle and it was used in a sacramental or a sacred mental way. So that was a that's another little footnote there that we want to share with you. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, let us touch on what Macy has said. Mm -hmm. Around page uh, sixty-seven of a book of the beginnings, a book of the beginnings on page sixty-seven. So we have it right here. So we're gonna just narrate it a little bit for you and put certain significant things up here. Now, what we mentioned in the Met of Caduce of His Majesty, before we get into that, in the Met of Caduce of His Majesty, Safit Abitu Anta Burukna Safit Safit is is uh, found 78 times, 78 times, Safit. It's found as a part of a name, and the name has um, particular significance, has particular significance for us. And this name here is E Yo Safit. E Yo Safit. Or really more correctly, because you see this this is a little different than that one. There's two kinds of um, S sounds, soft S, feminine S, soft S sounds. There is one, there is Sa, and there is Sa. Most Ethiopians will tell you that these two are basically the same. Can you see that right there? There is Sa and there is Sa. This is Sa. Right, not syllabated, and this is sa, right, syllabated, or as a sh sound or a sh. So it'll be more sa and sa sa sa. In gutters, it would more or less have a glide that would bring it to the sh sound. So in in true gutters speech, and a lot of the priests don't even Ethiopian priests, many of them don't speak this way, but some of them do at least syllabate the the Nagusu, this is called Nagusu Sa, or Nagusu Se, rather, but right here, this will be the fourth one, um, Nagusu Sa, right, the Rebbe, or the Nagusu Sa, you know what I'm saying, Nagusu Sa, which would be actually a Sha sound. So now if we would reread this, we would have this name as Eo, it's a two-part name, Eo Safit. Eo Safit, or in the English, Anglicized, it's known as Jehoshaphat. Now, many may be familiar with this, even in the Rastafari and the reggae world, you understand, um, by the song. There's a song, like in the Valley of Decision, and, and it's a religious Christian. It comes out of the old Negro, the Negro spirituals, or the old Negro church houses. And it's speaking about a time of judgment when, when, when multitudes of multitudes are gathered in the valley of decision. And it's this great time of a great judgment of, of Jehovah God, or of Yahweh, Lotu Subhat Baruchu, of the Almighty God. Now, th this is also known as a personal name. Now, what we're going to do as we continue in this um, sabbatical overflow, this Sabbath overflow, that means that we've touched on the basic the basic part of Sha, but there's certain elements that we'd like to add more emphasis. It's necessary for us to add more emphasis to certain particular um, 
areas. So we began with the Shof team, but we find out that the te is actually the 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 a sound. You understand? Or the 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 emphatic te. So it's not the soft te, but it's the hard te. Now in Hebrew there are two t's as well, but for most Jews or most Forced Hebrew speakers. When I say forced Hebrew, forced Hebrew, I am saying that this is modern Hebrew that has been, in some sense, resurrected. Almost, I call it Frankenstein Hebrew. It's Frankenstein Hebrew. What do I mean by Frankenstein? Um, what do I mean by Frankenstein Hebrew? I mean that it is. Hebrew, but it has a lot of Yiddish, it has a lot of other parts and other things in it, and it, it did not hold faithfully to its true linguistic Ethiopic roots. If it did hold faithfully, a lot of this confusion in the linguistics between Hebrew, you understand, and the real meanings of these words and the context of these words in the Hebrew would be easier and more readily understood. Now, if you look into the Hebrew, right, there are two there are two tests. Now, this is maybe a good place to go. Go to go to Psalm 119 for a moment. Just go to Psalm 119. If you go to Psalm 119, it's what they call an acronistic. It's an acronistic psalm. That means that it begins with one of the letters of the Hebrew um, alphabet. Now, if you look at Psalm uh, 11965. If you look at Psalm 119.65, you'll find that it has, uh, uh, what is it, teth? Teth? It's really eight. 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 Similar to tat, which means finger. Tat. Eight. The psalm, it says, the psalm, it says right here, thou hast dealt well with thy servant, Abed tu, O father, I father his father, O father the house, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I have believed, or my men accepted as truth, thy commandment. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before I was afflicted. Here's what shows that affliction is not only good, but it's necessary. It is necessary. In other words, when people say, oh, Babylon, they Babylon about Babylon, it's because they have no discipline, no order. But in the discipline and the order, you know that affliction you understand when you are spiritually being being perfected, it's like the process of uh, purifying silver or gold. Before I was afflicted, I went astray or pruning, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Thou art tov and doest tov, tovia. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have for, forged a lie against me. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole or my fitun, my complete heart. Their heart is as fat as grease. They call themselves Christian. We call themselves Greek, grease cans. They are grease cans. Their heart is as fat as grease. But I delight in thy law. See, counterfeit Christianity says that there is no law. You understand? They deny the law of God as though God's law you understand, was done away with because they don't understand what they affirm or what they say. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Once again, he says, it's good that I've been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The, the law of thy mouth, the law of thy mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver. And then it goes to verse 73 where it begins, where they have as jod, but really yod, in the Hebrew, right? Now, in this particular Psalm 119, if you go to verse 169, you will find the, the Tau, Tau, or Tau, 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 or Tau, Tau, right? Right here, Tau. Now, the difference is this, is that one is a soft sound and one is a hard sound. I mean, it's similar to the, the particular right here, if you look in the, and this is where His Majesty's Bible is very, very, um, it's very, very accurate. Um, let me put something here to hold the page. It's very, very accurate. You find that there's, there's a, a T that looks like, 
something like that in the Hebrew. That looks something against that. It looks like something like that right here. And that is the heart of that's that's tes. That is not tau. And you can see here in Safit, you understand, it has the other tet and not this tet right here that looks like the cross. This is the soft tet. So the metaf kedus of Nagus and Nagas is very consistent and has a lot of, it may not seem like a lot to the blind because they can't see a lot. You, you know, they can't sight. But to those who can see, you understand, the metaf kedus truly is the book um, of the seven seals. So this tab right here, so it'll be Eyo Safit or Shafit, Eyo Shafit, Eyo Shafit or Eyo Shafit, Eyo Shafit. So we have Saft or Safit here. Now, in the Met of Kedus, there are some, some areas where, where it appears in both forms. Sometimes the, 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 the Sat Set. You understand the sat set um, comes into comes into play. I'm just scanning over it in a couple of places, namely in Chronicles, because Chronicles was written later on, and that's so interesting that in the Met of and the Goose and the Guest, we even see that nuance, that that small nuance that somebody had to be paying attention to that. That in the time of Chronicles, a lot of the history that was already written in Samuel. Um, or in the Kings, was now rewritten again. That's why some people say, well, why do we have these two, these two histories? One was after, the, after the, the return from Babylon, after the Babylonian exile, during the time of Nehemiah and, and Ezra. In fact, Ezra or Ezra is responsible for the squaring. We have the square Hebrew that we are used to today. The square Hebrew, like we'll find here, we have the square Hebrew. Now this is uh, uh, Shoftim. Now even the show is 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 curious because they add the vowels there. You understand? They add actually the vowel there. You understand? Or, or pointing the the nekut or the nek uh, the nukut. They add it there to change the sound according to the Eurocentric. Uh, um, branch or grafting in of the European, um, Polish, and the German Jews, they pronounce it as shof, shof, in that sense. But more correctly, it should be sa, saf. It should be in saftim or shafetim, shafetim. Now, Macy, now, here's where we're going to make this connection. Gives us a little bit of background about this particular word. And I'd like you to, to at least just bear with us bear with me and, and try to pay attention as much as one can to certain things, take some notes. So this is on page 67, 67 of a book of the beginnings, which we think it was the first book that he had actually um, 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 wrote on this particular subject matter. And here he's talking about, it begins here, it says, the Phoenician had a kind of judges as recorded by Livy and proved by the two tablets of Marseille, Marseille, Marseille or Marcellus, I guess French, and Carthage, designated Sufetes, Sufetes, or Sufetes, Sufete, Sufete, where upon it is inferred and assumed that the Hebrews imported their Shofetim, or judges from Phoenicia. In other words, Macy now is trying to add a needed correction to the Eurocentric or the European and Englishmen and other Europeans that had done certain biblical studies and saying that there was a certain white man madness, a European madness that crept in, coupled with racism and ignorance, and it connects even with the evolution and all that, where white men would prefer to say that they evolved from monkeys instead of saying that they basically are descendant, in a sense, from black people or from peoples of color, you understand? But they will say that they were created in that very same way that they appear today, and their own DNA research, it, it disputes that false finding and false conclusion. But here he's saying that some have inferred that the Hebrews imported the idea of Shofetim. Here they put 
pH instead of an F. The older way has pH. Show 15 and add the E after the pH or where between the F and the T right here. That they imported their show for team or judges from Phoenicia. Now, one named um, Gold Zyher, Gold, Gold Zyher um, writes this. The consideration of the word shofet or, sh or safet, safet itself leads to the conviction that the office was an institution suggested, suggested, they say, by Phoenician custom, for it is found in no other Semitic language in the same signification as in these two dialects of Canaan or of Canaan. The Samaritan in which Shaphat or Shaphat, S-H-A-P-H-A-T, is also found, scarcely requires separate mention. So the Hebrews, so the Hebrews, as was often the case, must have borrowed the term shofet together with the corresponding institution from their cultivated neighbors, that is, the Phoenicians. Now, Macy's going to get at this. He just quoted this from Gold Eyes or Gold, Gold Zyher. You understand? Basically, about what, here's what Gold Zyher said about this. And this has been, and you still may hear in some seminaries and other kind of Christian teachers or preachers or ones that do any Bible study that's worth the name Bible study, them saying that, yes, the Hebrew language was developed from Phoenician. Or they'll say that many of the Hebrew customs were borrowed from the Phoenicians or, you know, or borrowed here or there. But in this Phoenician connection, Macy is now going to disconnect that so-called false and forced connection and put the true connection once again in the Egypts. Remember, that's where Musa or Moses was learned in the wisdom, the Tibet, the Hokma, or the mystery schools, according to Acts 7 and 22. Now, Macy says, but the roots of the Hebrews are not always to be found in Canaan or the Canaan, the Canaanu, nor were their institutions borrowed there from their neighbors. He's saying that the roots of the Hebrews are not to be found in the, among the Canaanites or Canaan. And this is what, this is the popular misconception that the Hebrews derived everything, got everything they got from either the Canaanites or the Phoenicians. You understand? But here's the proof that this is not always the case, and, and, and the institutions were not borrowed from their neighbors. And here Macy reveals, before we go get to page 60, actually, my bad, I said 67. I, I see this right here. I thought it was 67, but here's where here's where I was in error. It's actually was page 62, so 62. So book of the beginning, 62, where Macy speaks on the Shofetim or the Shofetim, the Shofetim, the Shofetim. And here Macy says that, um, Gerald Macy says this. He says that, uh, but the roots of the Hebrews are not always to be found in in Canaan or Canaan, nor were their institutions borrowed there from their neighbors. He goes on to write that the SEP, the SEP, now this is where we have to try to put, maybe we'll put it right up here at the top, the SEP, S-E-P, right, the SEP. Now remember, the P can go to F. The P can go to F, can be permutated to the F sound. The P also can also be permutated to a B sound. You understand? As well as the B can be permutated to a W sound. See, you have to understand these things about linguistics, about different speakers. Different speakers speaking the same words have certain dialectical and cultural preferences to say things in, in different ways. This is, when we understand this as black people, so-called Africans, we'll recognize that all these different tribal languages, there's a similarity and a harmony to them. And, and it's not like the outsiders, the Ferenc, make it seem like in this African tribe or among this African nation or group of Africans, there are thousands of dialects spoken, you know, to make it seem like it's thousands of different languages. But then when you look at white people, Europeans, African-Americans, other immigrants, and how people use English, 
They use English also in, in, in nearly thousands in, in, in thousands and literally thousands of, of, of ways themselves. Now this um I think I lost this right here. My computer um seems to have uh seems to have powered down at this particular point. So I might use this portion right here as a pause for the cause to regroup and, and, and to come again. But let me just leave leave one with this because it's very interesting where we were at. We'll have to probably open um open some of those um windows and everything again and, and set up set up again. But what he was pointing out, what Macy was pointing out, but you can go there if you have that particular book and uh, the society is going to be reprinting those books as well. Um the Gerald Macy collection and hopefully we can get the price to something, you know, the publisher, the printers can work with us so that we can get it down to something that is that is more reasonable. You know what I'm saying? That's definitely more reasonable. Let's see if this comes up again. But what he's going to explain, actually, is the Seth, the Seth to the Sith, like Ayu Sith. And if you recall, in some of the earliest sabbaticals we was with Joseph in Egypt, we talk about the Ayu, because the Ayu part right here is the EU, the EU, as we, as we have this right here, EO, EO, Sha, or Sa, Si, Te, EO, Sha, Si, Eyo Safit, Eyo Safit, or Jehoshaphat. You know what I'm saying? Jehoshaphat. Now, the Eyo is the Iu, the Iu, the Eyo, the Iu part that Macy writes exhaustively um, concerning, which looks sometimes a little bit like um, Iu, the Iu, the I, and this is the U, but also it's a Yo. Yo, we have so we have Eo. And Eo is a contracted form of Yahweh or Yah is an older form of Yah. So instead of saying Yah Shafat, they said Eo, Eo Shafat, Eo Shafat. So Eo is also a name of God. It's, it's the name of God. It's Yahweh. It's his name as the one who is who he is, as the self existent one of the great I am. This would be the ancient form of the I am, right? I am justice. I am the judge. I am judgment or the judgment of the I am, the judgment of, of Yah. Now, why this is important in the metaphysical practical application that we're going to deal with u utilizing the Schofield, uh, not Schofield Study Bible here, but the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. One now, like with Ephraim and Manasseh teaching, you know what I'm saying? One can see the true context of it as well as the practical application. Because, like we said, our machine um, computer went down, it powered down, so we've lost those windows that we had opened and everything. Um, also, what we where was at in Macy, Gerald Macy, but you can refer to um, page uh, 62 of a book of the beginnings where he breaks down the etymology coming out of ancient Egypt, and that would be more both correct and logical when we are looking at the Bible in its context, in the context of the Bible, in the context of the Israelites, in the context of the, the author, you understand, who is our Coptic Hebrew, um, our Ethiopian Hebrew brother, um, Moshe in the Hebrew, or Musa. Bamarinya and in the ancient Gutas in I and I first language. So stay tuned. More to come, my brothers and sisters. Yah willing. Shalom. Ras Teferi.